it's June 15th, 2011, and tonight uh, there's going to be a lunar eclipse. That means the moon. And um, basically, the sun, the earth, the moon will line up with the earth in the middle, causing what's called a lunar eclipse. When the usually the moon reflects the light of the sun, and that's why it you know lights up the sky at night with this like it's white color. But when the earth gets between, it blocks most of the light from the sun, and it causes it to go um, to go from white to gray to a rust color, anywhere from like an orange to like a blood red. And this is where you get the term blood red moon, which is talked about in the Bible, and it's. It, it's usually a, kind of a foreboding event. So how red the moon gets depends on the atmospheric conditions of planet Earth. Now every day, every night, the light you see on the moon is actually a reflection from the sun. Now when there's a lunar eclipse and the Earth is in the middle, the Earth blocks a lot of the sunlight. And so what happens is you just get a little bit of the sunlight coming from at the sides of planet Earth, um, diffused, maybe like diffused light, um, and also uh, what happens is the atmosphere of the Earth um, is filtering the light, so uh, the blue tones of the sunlight are filtered, and the red tones go through, and they then reflect on the moon, and so it gives the moon this a rust color appearance, but the saturation of the redness, how red it will appear, depends on how much uh, dust is in the atmosphere and this type of thing. So basically, how much of the blue tones get filtered. And so this is this is interesting. The more red the moon appears to be, biblically, the more of a a, a sign of significance it is. So it will be interesting tonight to see um, how red the moon becomes. Will it be a blood red moon? So some facts about this eclipse. I have notes because it's a lot to remember. So this is going to be the first eclipse of this year. First to total uh, lunar eclipse of 2011. There's always at least two in every year. Um, however, this is the longest, deepest total eclipse in more than a decade. The last was in the year 2000. This is uh, the greatest magnitude of eclipse. Um, uh, the lunar eclipse is 1.7 magnitude, which basically means how deep it's getting into the shadow of the Earth. And it's only second to the last eclipse that happened in the year 2000. Another one that uh, will be this long will not happen for another seven years until 2018. Now, what's interesting about that is if, you know, all eyes on Jerusalem, if you're paying attention to the politics and what's happening, um, and once again, they're trying to divide Jerusalem and... Uh, give away parts of Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, and um, this is also kind of a sign also of the start of the Great Tribulation, or you know, the seven year tribulation period, um, and some kind of a peace, so called peace contract covenant for seven years, um, and so with this Blood red moon, if it be, if it is blood red moon, and it likely will be. Um, this is also foreboding. It's it will there will not be another like it for seven years. And in an Indian um, uh, article online, um, it it said that the next such eclipse will only take place again in uh, the year twenty one forty one. I'm not sure if this is really accurate, but I think they are saying the an, an identical eclipse will not happen until then. However, in just seven years, there will be one with the same kind of uh, duration. Now, another important thing um, is that this um, eclipse is going to be passing. It's going to be 
as it happens, the moon will be passing through the constellation that used to be known as uh, Serpentarius, which is Latin for serpent bear, and now it's known by the Greek name um, Opificus, Opificus, which means the same thing, serpent bear, and so it can also uh, was pointing maybe to an Antichrist figure. Um, okay. So the, the the moon will begin to darken at 18:22 universal time, which I think is the same as uh, GMT. Um, the total eclipse, however, will begin at 19:22 universal time and will continue for about an hour and a half, 101 minutes, when the moon will be completely covered by the Earth's shadow. So we're just going to be in its darkest uh, thing. The deepest point, when it's closest to the center of the Earth's shadow, will be at 2012 UT, universal time, and the last of the shadow will clear from the moon around two hours later at 2202 UT. Um, so this eclipse will be visible in most of the world most of the eastern hemisphere is going to get it the best. Um, in North America pretty much won't be visible at all and most of the Pacific Ocean is not going to see it. Um, however, uh, in let's say New Zealand, southern Japan and that kind of area they will see they will see the beginning of the clips just as the moon is setting and the sun will be coming up so they won't see the whole of the they won't see the whole of the total eclipse and then in as far as the americas in the eastern part of south america they will see it ending and the same kind of goes for europe but the best locations um the middle east uh, india the indian ocean and that kind of surrounding area will have the best um, time frame to see the total eclipse. So here's some scripture maybe everyone's very familiar with Acts chapter 2 which is about Pentecost, Shavuot, the day of uh, Pentecost, okay, and um, what happened and and we actually just uh, not long ago, a few days ago, was Pentecost. Um, and now there's going to be a total lunar eclipse, and about six days from now, there's going to be summer solstice. Now anyway, I'm just going to read these verses to you. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and um, the context obviously is people being Jews from all the different nations, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in new tongues, proclaiming the wonderful works of God, and... Um, so some people were mocking and saying, well, they're drunk. And then the Apostle Peter says, these men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows, billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, so solar eclipse, and the moon to blood, a total lunar eclipse with a red, dark, blood red moon, before the coming and the great the coming of the great and glorious day of Yahweh, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, in the book of Hebrews, if you just read the first couple of verses of chapter 1, it says, um, In these last days God has spoken to us by his Son. And anyway, since Yahushua uh, died and rose from the dead, it has been the last days. So in Acts chapter 2, it was the last days, and today it is also still, we are in the last days, but we are even more so in the end of the end. And that last uh, verse there uh, that I read from X to the last two verses, um, you know, the sun will be darkened, the moon will turn to blood before the coming of the great and wonderful and sometimes 
uh, different verses say the great and terrible or the great and dreadful day of the Lord Yahweh comes. Okay, so that said, this the more these blood red moons. Um, and considering the constellation that it passes by, considering that it won't happen again for another seven years, it is very foreboding of the seven-year tribulation time period. And if you're aware of the political uh, um, uh, arena today and what's happening presently with Jerusalem, and they want to split up the land, and they want to split up even the city of Jerusalem, and also how nations continually are just turning on Israel. Um, I don't advocate blind support for the Israel government either, because most governments, including that one, I would say all governments are corrupted. And the Bible doesn't say trust in chariots, trust in men, trust in government. It says trust God. So you put you trust God. Okay. But that said, the Bible talks about this. Um, that God will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to the entire world and before the end of the end comes mean uh get in so this is in the Great Tribulation, all the nations of the earth will turn against Jerusalem, will gather for to war, and this will culminate with Armageddon. The Bible says he will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to the entire uh world, all the nations. Um Anyway, quoting, am I saying that there was go there is for certain going to be a Palestinian state created at the end of the year and that the Great Tribulation or the Tribulation period will start? No, I'm not saying this. I'm saying it could, and but um, it's in God's hands. So uh, during the 90s, they nearly created the Palestinian state, but at the kind of the last moments, it all fell apart, and so. If God needs, uh, if we need more time to fulfill the plans of God on earth, then it's not going to happen. But it is very foreboding. It's something to keep in prayer. It's something to be aware of. The Bible says, watch and pray. You don't know when he's coming, okay? So you should be ready and you should occupy until he comes. That said, I have another... Um, uh, it's not just a prophetic word, but it is an audible word that a prophet heard, uh, and I'll share this in a moment. Um, about six days in a row, there will be uh, eclipses, perhaps combination of lunar and solar eclipses, and it will baffle scientists, and it will be a sign of Yahushua's return. So I'm definitely not saying the Gertz tribulation is happening this year, but there's the fact that it's it's very foreboding, I keep saying this word, um, but it is certainly a sign of the times and of the end. It's a full uh, lunar eclipse, and it's likely going to be a blood red moon, we'll see tonight. There's lots of volcanic ash in the Earth's atmosphere, which makes it more likely to be a blood red moon. Um, there won't be another eclipse of this length for another seven years. The tribulation is supposed to be about a seven year period. There's also right now politically lots of talk about creating a Palestinian state, which is also, again, a big sign of the end times and the tribulation period coming. Also, the eclipse will be occurring as um, the moon passes, the constellation that means serpent's bearer, so it's also a sign um, as to the revealing of the Antichrist, that this, is, that this man will soon reveal himself. Uh, also, um, this is also, to me, is very significant, and I just now... Uh, notice this. I was I wanted to share this audible word that a prophet, um, prophet Elijah. This is her surname. Her name is Elizabeth Elijah. So prophet Elijah, um, not a claim to be Elijah of of old reincarnated or anything like this. But yes, she does have uh, an anointing uh, like Elijah, the prophet Elijah, uh, in the Old Testament, as do many prophets. But yes, I think she is. A very important end time prophet for these days. Anyway, so I was about to share this word that she received in 1998 that there would be uh, six days in a row uh, these 
eclipses and to my surprise it is a june 15th is the date that she heard this word So she originally received that June 15th, 1998, and then August 6th, 1999, she heard audibly again, uh, Yahweh say, remind them of the six eclipses that would come as a sign of the coming of Yahushua again. And then two days later, this is what she writes on the website, remind them of the six eclipses. Yahweh said to me audibly that would come as a sign of the coming of Yahushua again. These eclipses will baffle the scientists and will last longer than anticipated. And then Yahushua comes again and she says, is, is it for three days solar and lunar that baffle the scientists? I also have a mandate of Yahweh for today to remind the people of the audible voice that she had heard for three hours. Um, this also happened in 1998, between sleeping and awake when he said over and over, what if Rosh Hashanah is the day I come? Maybe it was Yahushua who said this. That happened in 98, 1998, one day before Rosh Hashanah. Then, before Rosh Hashanah, he said if he had come, how few would have been called his bride. And then he explained how he delayed his coming. Um, for, because Satan would have mocked how few were accounted worthy to be part of the bride. So it's God's mercy that he delays the tribulation time. Um, and Jesus says he gave us more time. So like this scripture that I just read in Acts chapter 2 about you know the signs and the wonders that God will do if you do a word study, it's like when God gives a dream and there's an interpretation of the dream, these signs also have an interpretation and a meaning. So this, I mean, depending also on if it turns out to be a blood red moon, um, there will be, it's certainly, it's an even more powerful meaning and more foreboding. But it's, this is going to be the deepest, the longest for another seven years. The tribulation period is going to be like a seven year period. So this is part of the interpretation. The constellation that it's passing through is has the meaning serpent bearer, and so this also has to do with the soon revelation of the Antichrist, and by default also the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, known as the tribulation or the great tribulation. It doesn't matter so much the label. Now another significant thing, another part of the interpretation is also that we just went through a uh, Pentecost. And the date was basically uh, June 8th on both the formula-based Hebrew calendar and the observation-based Hebrew calendar. Although there's the Karaites actually uh, put it on a Sunday, so it's completely different for them. But anyway, uh, formula-based, observation-based, you get a June uh, 8th date for Pentecost, that was just a few days ago, and now six days from now we're going to have summer solstice, and which is a significant date in an occult calendar, and of course also to the occultists, um, a lunar eclipse is significant for them also, and for, for their evil reasons that I don't really understand, but I'm also going to be putting a video up soon about the solstice, and um, why you should be in prayer at this time, because there's a lot of occult activity at the time, and um, it's heightened level of spiritual warfare. And also that video that I'm putting up has some revel revelation. I meant to say relevance, but it has rev it has relevance to the end times and um, types of and kind of what's related to Revelation chapter nine about demonic creatures coming out of the abyss and, and that in these end times there will be um, demonic creatures and entities released uh, to wreak havoc on the earth and in a way make life on earth more of a, a living hell especially during the tribulation and the end and at the end of the end times so that should be up very soon too
Another part of the interpretation relating a bit to the serpent bearer constellation is that this is six days, which is the number of man, or you would say and it can be a kind of an evil number, number associated with the Antichrist, triple six. It's six days from the summer solstice, which is an evil time for the occultists. And so um, this also points to the increased level of evil in these end times and during the tribulation, known as the time of Jacob's trouble. It will be a time of trouble for God's people who are on the earth. It will be a time of trouble for all people. And Satan will have a lot of power. But it is important to remember that it is not called the great and terrible day of Satan. It's called the great and terrible day of the Lord, Yahweh, who is sovereign and supreme. And who, in the end, absolutely has the victory. So... These are really exciting times we live in, but it's not necessarily fun. It's very serious, and there's a lot at stake. This is a battle for souls, and a battle for the glory of God. And these are the things that weigh in the balance. For me, um... June 15th, 1998, I just shared that word, is it's also a reminder of Yahushua's return, and also uh, it's also pointing to this other audible word, and the eclipses when they occur six days in a row, then Yahushua will come again. Now, does that mean he's coming? Does it mean his official coming when he lands physically on the Mount of Olives? Uh, uh, to wage war against the nations of Armageddon, or does it mean coming in a different way at the start of the Great Tribulation, the end of Revelation chapter 6, when all the people of the earth, it says, great and small, rich and poor, cry out to the rocks, and they try to hide in caves, and they say, fall on us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb? Is it like that? When Yahushua comes as Yahweh came at the Passover to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. He came the pillar of fire, the cloud of smoke. Is it that kind of coming that is sort of talked about in scripture? Or is it this physical coming to the Mount of Olives? I don't know, but time will tell. Um, the Bible says, watch and pray. And pray that you be accounted worthy to be caught up from the time of testing and trial that will soon come upon the earth. This uh, blood red moon, this total lunar eclipse, is also a call to holiness. If you read the book of Joel, a large portion of it is devoted to wail and fast, repent of your sin, and call a holy, a sacred assembly. So it's a call to holiness as well. You don't want to be left behind. There, in, as the time gets closer to the end, there will be more and more signs. And so God will hold everyone on earth accountable. No one will be able to say they didn't really know what was coming.